Welcome back, Zero to 60, Matt McChesney, Brewmeistus. Matt, what you got going on over at the gym this morning? Man, it has been uh, extremely fast-paced this morning, to say the least. Um, we had a little bit of an emergency in here this morning with the uh, with the uh, early group, and I couldn't do Coach JB's show, unfortunately. But we're back now at 1030. We just had a great group in there, and, you know, Big Tank and uh, Mustafa Johnson and Jordan – Jordan Ochoa and a bunch of the other veterans are in there finishing it off with the young guys. And uh, it's just been a great morning so far. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about 2024 over at six zero to say the least uh, from the body bags. And, you know, the, you know we, we've had a couple of those moves this morning, the university of Maine and Mike DeVito, your next teammate of mine bought a couple this morning and they're looking at a couple of the players and from the body bags to the online programming, that we're going to be doing here at six zero moving forward. Uh, the distance program is going to take on a life of its own. Um, we'll be able to help people from all over the country just with the click of a button. Uh, so we're really excited about that, but so much good stuff going on at six zero. Make sure you check it all out at all the different pl platforms at six zero Academy on Twitter, Instagram, and of, of course, TikTok. Uh, TikTok sitting at about 217,000 people right now. Uh, and the interaction there, uh, back and forth is pretty awesome. So, so I'm uh, I'm pretty excited, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm I'm just more excited that I get to do it all with you. To be honest with you, Red. Wow, that's so sweet of you. Yeah, also, yeah. Uh, as you can tell, Matt's really excited. So excited, in fact, that he has the hiccups. So, yes, pardon him as he works through that. I'm going to try my best to scare it out of him. But first, we're going to get on <laughs> to our title sponsor with the. Uh, Obviously, we're sponsored by Bet Online with NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing. Bet Online has you covered with all up to second odds, news, and scores right on their apps with additional odds, lines, trends, and info, both on the desktop and mobile site. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime you want. Head on over there today, get into the action, and see all the updated odds. And remember to use our promo code that's believe, B L E A V, to receive 50% off on your welcome bonus for your first deposit. Bet online is where the game starts. Uh, let's get right into it. Honestly, I really didn't have a plan coming into here, but there was a really great question from a viewer who's been waiting in the wings since 10 a.m. when we promised we'd start. We had to delay things a little bit, as Matt already mentioned. But Use Name wanted to know, will there ever be any film breakdown on this channel? It would be amazing to watch a former pro break down the nitty-gritty of the trenches. Matt, I know that you do that within your program, and you also release some of that over on TikTok. But can you give Use Name an idea if that would ever show up here on Zero to Sixty? Well, so is he asking, like, could we do a film breakdown on the YouTube page? Is that essentially what he's asking? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, so. We can, we can do that, bro. Easy. Um, to be completely honest with you, we could probably get that done for you on Monday uh, when we get done. Yeah, well, that's what we'll do. On Monday when we get done with the show, uh, talking and wrapping up the, the NFL weekend, previewing the the national championship game on monday night i'm not going to give you my pick for that until monday morning um and then we'll go in the film room afterwards and you just how about this you let us know what you want us to br break down on the film breakdown on monday morning and brie and i will come in here monday morning at, in the lab and break it down for you and put it on youtube and have a little interaction with everybody back and forth how's that sound all right we'll get it done uh i think it's a tremendous idea so thank you for chiming in this. Tr tremendous. And if you have great ideas like that, too, or maybe you think they're great and you want to send them over to us, go ahead and do so. We're always taking suggestions and comments, regardless of what the trolls say. Uh, but I, I want to see that chat moving this morning. So go ahead and send them over. Also, Bernard Sandoval uh, said that, well, the first part of it. So I'm just here for the Bill Burr, st Bill Burr style anger and Bree's logical oh, take. Favorite. So apparently I'm the logical one. Bill Burr is your favorite? Not. Then Bill Burr is my favorite comedian ever. Like, I, I think he's absolutely hilarious and right on ninety nine point nine percent of the stuff that he talks about. My favorite, my favorite comedic line from his is when he's talking about marriage, and he's like, "Yeah, is this the line to lose half of my shit? Oh, look, it's moving." Uh, so that that one always resonated with me. I always thought it was hilarious. He's my favorite man. I, I love Bill Burr. Um. I think Mitch Hedberg would have to be my favorite just because of his delivery. It resembles a lot of mine where it's just very absurd and hilarious and he never breaks character because that's just who he was. And honestly, I respect it. 
Uh, you got a favorite comedian? Go ahead and drop it in the chat. I'm just waiting for people to drop in. We're a little late this morning, but um, if you want to get your questions and comments answered or highlighted, jump into the YouTube chat and let us know. As Matt already mentioned, we'll do um, NFL Weekend React, which means we have to do NFL Weekend Preview here. Uh, on the show, there's quite a slate for the final week of the year. Obviously, we're coming to a close. Some teams are moving into the playoffs. Some teams are not. Uh, Saturday slate is a little bit more truncated. You've got the Steelers and the Ravens and the Texans and the Colts. I'm not necessarily excited to see any of those games. However, it looks like the Steelers are sort of figuring it out. Uh, Matt, how do you think they move forward with their quarterback situation? And why weren't they playing Mason Rudolph to start? And really, that's my question here the entire season. I mean, if we're going to sit here and talk about putting your team in the best position to be successful, I understand that Kenny Pickett needs a look. No one's saying that Kenny Pickett doesn't need a look. I, But I'm also saying that everybody probably knew that Mason Rudolph was the guy for this job in training camp. In fact, I can almost guarantee you they did. So I look at this entire situation as how good could Pittsburgh be if they were playing the right guy the whole time? And then, you know, get small hands Kenny and Mitch Trubisky's out the door. So, you know, Kenny, Kenny Pickett's not a terrible quarterback, but he's damn sure not an elite one. And I think that if Pittsburgh had good support at the quarterback position with the way they run the ball, their offensive line figuring it out, I hate their wide receivers. Now, athletically, they're awesome. But I hate Deontay Johnson's effort. I hate Pickens' effort. I hate the way that they play. I, I think that Tomlin has got just enough respect to to keep people, you know, walking the line. But there's something missing in Pittsburgh. And it, I'm not saying that it's time to get rid of Mike Tomlin. It might be time to, like, reshuffle the deck with some of your skill players so you can kind of match the intensi intensity of that defense. You know, when you got Micah Fitzpatrick trying to fight guys – you know, because they're not blocking or not playing hard or just stopping in the middle of rep, that's not good, especially in Pittsburgh of all places. It's interesting that Pittsburgh and New England are having similar conversations where they're most winning as coaches. And I know the Patriots have had more of a backslide in the recent years. However, Mike Tomlin has yet to have a losing season. And, and so to think that it's time to move on from him may be misguided. I, I, don't, I think that the the relative human nature of people is to make a big swinging change when something isn't working instead of realizing that you have to kind of water the grass where you're standing. Uh, and I think that's the frustration with a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans is they're mm -hmm. looking, you know, uh, get rid of the quarterback, get rid of the head coach. It's time to move on. It's not good enough when honestly it's about more of the general manager doing be a better job of building the roster. Now in New England's case, it's uh, Bill Belichick's responsibility to do both. And so I understand in New England where they may want to remove those responsibilities, but I think the smartest thing to do would be remove that from Bill Belichick, make him just the head coach, get rid of GM responsibilities, get someone in there who can dedicate that time and effort into that, and then hopefully build a roster around eventually a quarterback who can handle that system. It's just very weird to me, the very similar and parallel conversations that are happening in both fan bases to get rid of coaches that are not the issue. Matt, uh, the newest information out of New England and out of Foxborough is that Bill Belichick will, you know, basically be out at the end of the season. I still don't believe it. I still think that's pretty much crazy talk considering what he's done for the organization, but we are on the back end of any sort of winning culture for the Patriots. How do you feel about that situation? Uh, I, I, you know, I've been reiterating this all week, but I don't, I don't feel that Belichick is going to move. I think this is posturing um, I, I think New England would be extremely so short-sighted to lose a guy that built that entire franchise. I mean, look, have they been down? Yes. Have they underachieved? Yes. Do they need a quarterback? Yes. You get this guy a quarterback and it's over. His defense is outstanding. They can run the football. The guys are still trying to play hard for him. You can tell that they want to keep Coach Belichick check around and if I'm a New England if I'm a New England Patriot fan if I'm Robert Kraft I want to make sure that he breaks the wins record wearing red white and blue wearing the silver and blue so that's something that is important for the New England faithful um I you know a bunch of cheating fucks in my opinion I'm no New England fan but I sure do have a ton of respect for what they did and how they did it 
Well, how they did it, maybe not so much, but what they did, yes. Um, you know, it, it's it's a very sticky situation. I think they can figure it out if they just sh- shelf ego, but at the same time, that's going to be pretty tough when you're talking about Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft and the New England Patriots. They are walking ego. So I mean, we'll see what happens with all of that there, but I don't foresee Bill Belichick just kicking ro- kicking rocks and going to the Chargers or something. That would be I think it would be detrimental to him and detrimental to his legacy. And also, I don't think the Chargers are built for that either. There's nobody on that roster that wants Bill Belichick walking through the door. Herbert doesn't want that. You know, it's Bill Belichick isn't a quarterback whisperer. He's a defensive coach that just happened to inherit and, you know, draft Tom Brady. He got knocked or when Drew Bledsoe got knocked out, Brady went in and they caught fire. So there was some luck in all of that too, but Really, what what I give Belichick the most credit for is not drafting Tom and not playing Tom. It's going back to Tom after he got hurt in the AFC title game his first year when he could have stayed with Drew Bledsoe over the Super Bowl, and he went back to Tom Brady. That was when Tom Brady was made. you know, And that's why Bill Belichick is such a good coach because he never questions himself. Oh, you send Josh McDaniels with him, and then you solve all of your issues there. Although it's crazy to hear you uh, assimilate the idea that luck plays a huge part. But I think luck plays a huge part in a lot of life. A lot of things would have worked out differently had basically the the flap of a butterfly's wings gone differently or later. So I think it's interesting to note there. Um I want to move on from the Patriots. They make me sad. Uh, I understand why you don't like them, but to say that, you know, most NFL NFL teams don't cheat is kind of wild to me. Is there an NFL coach in the Patriots man right there trying to don't get don't get caught and don't try to scapegoat your quarterback. Anyway, I really don't want to have this conversation because I know exactly where you're going to go with it. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) I think you should direct your anger towards, you know, the Jets and, and figure all that shit out because I I, I just don't get it. Uh, the a guy VR said, "Yeah, the Patriots are sad." I realize that, I, and I understand that. That's I'm a reformed Patriots fan. We don't talk. You're about a Tom it. Brady fan. I'm a Tom Brady fan. Well, I was also a Gronkowski fan. You know, miles ahead of Travis Kelsey. Um, before we get into a war over tight ends and skill positions, I want you. You made an interesting um, comment about egos in NFL coaches. I don't think there's a coach that exists in the league that doesn't have some type of ego. I think like there's a, there's elevated egos in guys. And I think that you can see that in some of the coaches that will remain unnamed, but possibly exist here in the state of Colorado. But uh, the fact that you kind of have to have an air of an ego or, or an alter ego to coach in the NFL. Don't you think that's true? Or do you think that there's coaches that exist that put everything else ahead of themselves? I'll tell you, if you don't have a kind of a massive ego and you don't, you don't think that you're the shit as a player or a coach, you're probably not going to make it very long in this game. Uh, for the simple fact that it's so cutthroat and there's so many people that are are constantly trying to tell you what you can't do rather than what you can, you know, that if you're not your biggest fan, your own biggest fan as a player or a coach, you're not going to have any fans in the, in the real world. No one's going to support you. So I understand that there's, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like that cocky part. I don't really think it's cocky. I think it's confident. Um, and I, I kind of, I kind of dig guys who have attitude problems and are a little cocky and people don't like him a little bit. Well, he's an asshole. He really thinks a lot of himself. Yeah. Well, when I hear that. I use that usually is coming from a person who doesn't think anything about themselves and probably is pretty miserable. So I prefer a guy who's egotistical and that and knows he's the shit and isn't afraid to say it. I like those kind of guys, man. Those are the kind of dudes that are really good players and, in my opinion, turn out to be leaders and business owners and great fathers and then guys that, you know, can help lead the community, not just a football field gridiron circumstance. 
Well, I think that's when you start weighing the negative versus the positive ego and you start getting into the it of things. And then we start discussing Greek mythology. And then I ask you your favorite paintings. But we're not going to get to that point. We're going to just basically revel off the fact that ego can be self-confidence too. And I think anybody who works at those higher levels and puts themselves on those pedestals is not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, speaking of, uh, I think one of the most humble, but full of ego in a positive way would be Nikola Jokic. I don't know if you caught the game last night, but that game winning 40 foot three pointer that he landed to secure the game was quite wild. And I wanted to point to that as probably the perfect example of the, just the right amount of ego. He knows when to show it. He's not too ahead of himself. He doesn't take anything too seriously, but he's very serious about what he does. If that makes sense. Man, I, I love watching that guy play basketball. And last night, you know, tied 127, 127 with golden state. And he hits a 40 plus footer, you know, kind of just kind of throwing it from behind him. And it just, it's all net, just bottom of the bucket. Everybody in San Francisco just shuts the fuck up. It was awesome. I mean, it, it's it's why it's why we love the Nuggets here in Denver. It's why we love Nicola. I loved what he said afterwards, Bree, was he was like, that. everyone's chasing the Nuggets, and so are we. We're chasing the Nuggets, too. We're chasing last year's Nugget team. We're trying to do this again. And I'm like, God, this guy is really... He's really figured it out. He's and I, I love the fact that now you see Nikola Jokic all over commercials, and he's becoming a little bit more mainstream, which I dig. Um, but I, I, I really, I really think this team is scary. And after the All Star break, when they really figure out how to play with the young guys, even though they lost some veterans, they replaced them with Watson and Braun, and you know some of these other cats are really good players. DeAndre Jordan looks like a younger version of himself out there hamming on people. So I, I think the Nuggets are scary. Um, you know, the Oklahoma City thing is kind of, I, I don't know if it's a scheduled loss that they've just played them twice and lost to them twice, but I, I think that that there'll be a different circumstance in the playoffs when they do play. Um, but look, there, I know this, in the West, you don't want to run with the Nuggets in a seven-game series. They'll run your ass out the door as fast as you can say run out the door. So they've got to be the favorite to win the title again. And I, I'd like to think that in a perfect world, I would love to see Milwaukee and Denver play for the title because I, I want to see Giannis and Jokic go head-to-head. -head. I want to see Murray and Lillard go head-to-head. -head. I love watching Damian Lillard play basketball. So I think that would be an un unbelievably entertaining seven-game series for the NBA title. And I hope it happens, honestly. Yeah, I hope so as well. You, uh, you mentioned the idea that you're competing against yourself. That's the greatest form of competition. You don't want to be competing against other people. So the Denver Nuggets and Nicole Jokic have it figured out. I just wanted to point that out. I'm also wearing my Nug Life t-shirt. So I thought it was appropriate given the circumstances. Also, Roberto Del Villar asked, Matt, would you ever work at the NFL level if, got, if you had the chance? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would take a lot for me to walk away from what I've built here at Six Zero. It would take a ton for me to walk away from the security, the ability to have my own schedule. You know, not only am I walking away from the gym, but I'd be walking away from the equipment company and that business, which is exploding right now. Again, check out Six Zero Equipment dot com if you if you want to get a bag. You know, that's what they're there for. They can they can absolutely help uh, get the guys in the trench right, O-line, D-line, pass rushers, linebackers, fighters. Like, it, it, it does it does a little bit of anything and everything. Uh, we'll put some videos up uh, next week to show you some of the little intricate things that it can accomplish, uh, uh, you know, as we talk about it going for, move, moving forward. But and then we would have to, I'd have to stop doing the media stuff too. And there's been years of building that. So I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but it would have to be, they would have to make me whole to say the least. Like it would be a, it would be a big jump in my opinion uh, with, you know, a parachute that I don't know if I trust. So the NFL means not for long. So if they want to give me a, 10 year contract for 150 million bucks, then yeah, I'll go. But, you know, if, if it's just a one year deal, you know, that's what I've been presented with in the past is I think the longest deal I was ever presented with is 
when CU offered me in 2015, I think they offered me a three year deal to go work for them. And I couldn't, I just couldn't walk away from the gym at that point. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always been a interesting conversation and an interesting, you know, uh, situation in my head, trying to figure that out. But I don't know if they, if they came knocking, I would listen. That's fair. Um, we'll get back into the NFL talk since we have a full slate of games to talk about. If you have questions, if you want to ask Matt, I'll try to get them in where I see fit. Uh, and he'll probably read them anyways as they're scrolling by. Uh, Sunday. Maybe. Hmm? Maybe. Maybe. I don't ever know. Sometimes you click on shit and I'm not prepared Maybe. for it. Facts. Well, it is facts. And I'm like, why is this popping up on my screen? I didn't touch it. Uh, the 11 o'clock hour has six games. You've got the Bucks and the Panthers, the Browns, Bengals, Vikings, Lions, Jets, Patriots, uh, Falcons, Saints, and Jaguars, Titans. Nothing's really jumping out to me there, except for maybe the Browns and the Bengals. The Bengals seem to be hanging on even without Joel Burrow at the helm. I know that you're kind of favoring what the Browns have going on right now with Joe Flacco, although in week 18, he is sitting out because they basically have everything uh, set to go for their playoff run. I can't believe I'm saying it, Flacco in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm happy about it, but I will support that this is kind of uh, unheard of. Super Joe Flacco. Let's go, baby. I got my 15 jersey on the way. I can't wait to rock it. No, that's a lie. But, Stop. Yeah. Oh, I was like, what the? F okay. No, it's pretty. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm super pumped for the Browns and everything they, they've accomplished. I think that Flacco is the perfect guy for that football team. I'm not sure how this all happened. I'm not saying I predicted it. No one did. No one predicted this, but I'm happy about it. I think it's pretty cool that, that Super Joe – has, has kind of attacked this the way he has. Uh, if he's going to sit in Cincinnati, you know, Cleveland is irrelevant because Cleveland's the five seed. They know where they're going. I mean, that, that's cool. I mean, I would, I would hope that he doesn't get, uh, you know, doesn't get a little old and, and stiff on his, on his rest because he is an old, an old head. Um, at the same time, though, when you're looking at the AFC, there's some big time relevant games in the AFC this week. And it's, you know, the, the AFC South game between the, the Titans or the Titans and the Jaguars is for the South. If Jacksonville wins, they win the South. And then the Houston Colts game is for the wild card. So I think Jacksonville will beat the Titans. The Titans are really struggling. They lost Will Levis. And then I, I like the Colts over the Texans. I think that the Texans kind of hit the rookie wall a little bit. You know, Stroud got hurt. He comes back this week. I have no doubt that he will be a good quarterback on Sunday, but I think Gardner Minshew and the Colts just have it. They're at home, uh, and I think that the Colts are going to pull that off and the Houston Texans are going to be on the outside looking in. And, and you know, it, it kind of is what it is. So I like the Colts in, in that regard, and I really love Gardner Minshew. And look, if Minshew's not going to be a Colt next year if they're the type of team that wants to ship him out. I think the Broncos should go beat on that door real hard too uh, to see if they can evaluate Garner Minshew to see if he fits the system that Coach Payton's trying to institute. So those two games are huge. And then moving to the, the Sunday night game, the Sunday night game between Buffalo and Miami is for the division. Who would have thought that a month ago Buffalo would be playing for the division and they are. That's why you keep swinging. Um, and I just, I love the Buffalo Bills right now. I, I think that Josh Allen is that guy. Nobody wants to play them right now. They are a nasty, surly bunch. Um, you know, Josh Allen is a modern-day John Elway with his feet and the, the electric nature of how the ball pops off his hand. And, you know, they're kind of behind the eight ball here. Everybody's, you know, not giving them the proper love. People don't think that they can do this or that. So I think Miami is on a, you know, is, is slowly – circling the toilet bowl right now and they're about to get flushed uh the, with injuries and, and everything else that's happened to them you know the 56 19 drubbing they took by the ravens is not a productive look uh if, if it happened week four like the broncos got killed by miami well we can learn from that if it's happening in week 16 17 that's who you are that's not we're not learning anything from this this is who we are so 
I, I, look, the AFC is going to be a damn dogfight. Both both conferences will, but the AFC specifically, there's a lot of teams that are teetering on that. If we don't do it this year, we're never going to fucking do it like Ledge. And Buffalo is at the front of that line, and then Baltimore's right behind them. So you know, Cleveland's right behind that, and then Miami, and everybody's got something to prove, with the exception of Kansas City as they've got, you know, multiple rings and multiple MVPs behind Mahomes. Um, although I'll tell you that the 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 uh New Year's Eve picture with Swifty and and Patty and Kelsey, I know you love talking about this, so I brought it up. Oh my god. It's, it's just the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Can we like literally not? Johnny yeah. Allen hasn't been able to get it done. Can and we, that's a trend. Can, I, can we just talk about football and just play football in Kansas City again? You're the one who keeps talking about it. I'm not, I'm not the one that keeps inviting old, old, you know, looks like. They're just, team they're team just, team. Li oh my God, they're just living there. No, you're stop. I'll mute your mic. I will drop you from the show so I can continue yeah, this right. conversation. It, that, I run, I, I talk. Okay, so he's muted, and the general idea here is that you want to talk about Josh Allen, because you're right, Matt. The idea that you have to have the Bills come in, they have to make a sweeping change here, but I cannot believe that you would say that the Miami Dolphins are close to being flushed down the toilet bowl of the league, although I will say I agree with your point that if you're in January, by like week 16, you should have this shit figured out, but they are dealing with injuries. I think the most dangerous thing you can do right now is count that team out. Listen, I've been a fan of Miami and the Dolphins prior to their uh, appearance on Hard Knocks, but now I've been even more so kind of uh, – happy about what I've seen this team go out and do. I don't trust McDermott and the Bills and Josh Allen. I don't think they necessarily have a great shot of going all the way. I think Josh Allen would be one and done in the playoffs because that's on trend for him and this coach. And there's not really a good semblance of like, they've got it figured out. It's always, it's the Bills year. And then it never ends up being the Bills year. Miami has so much more of culture instilled that we've been able to see up close. Plus Mike McDaniel, although given he does make some mistakes here and there. I'm still very upset about Bradley Chubb's injury and why he was out on the field. But the first time, you know, uh, uh, to go through here, sorry, there's a question that came through and it made me laugh and it distracted me. To go through here, I'm really excited about that game. I think the Bills and Miami is going to be a a very interesting matchup. I'm rooting for the Dolphins here. I do have biases. Um, I don't think Josh Allen is the second coming of John Elway. Uh, we haven't seen that played out. And maybe that's the team's responsibility. But maybe the core mechanics are there. I just think if you're going to compare somebody to John Elway, they have to sit have the same uh, alkylades to be able to match up against that. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I did want to point out that the teams that are in the hunt right now for the playoff picture, the Jaguars, Bills, Colts, Buccaneers, and Packers, if they win, it's a 99% plus possibility that they're in the playoffs, but only a couple of teams have a surefire kind of uh, way in. If the Bills lose, they still have a 66% chance of making it into the playoffs. So it's not all over for them, but they can, they could really upset the Dolphins here. Uh, the Packers, a 16% chance. I didn't think Jordan Love would be leading his team to the playoffs. And I would allow uh, a little bit more faith in Jordan Love than if Aaron Rodgers made the playoffs in his present year, regardless of injury. So I wanted to throw that out there so I could, you know, fire you up a little you bit. You would have more faith in Jordan Love in the playoffs than Aaron Rodgers? Currently, presently, if Aaron Rodgers wasn't hurt. So let, let me get this straight. You would have more faith in Jordan Love in the playoffs, both yeah. guys healthy, than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he's proven he can't get it done. That is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has four MVPs and Super Bowl MVPs and a ring and is a top five ball spinner of all time. Jordan Love just got there. Yeah, I mean, and he's doing on. a good job. He's doing a good job, but to say you would have more faith in Jordan Love over Aaron Rodgers, that's because you don't like Aaron Rodgers. So let's be real. Currently in his present in his present place in his what career, yes. Really? I'm not I'm not matching their prime. I said without the injury. Whoa, man. I, there's no I respectfully disagree. So you don't have to be you don't have to be respectful about it. Yeah, regardless. I, regardless. I, just, <laughs> I like that shit. 
I don't give a shit what you think about you it. Know. I just and wanted to I'm throw that out there. That's so um, Another game that I'm not looking forward to is the Broncos versus the Raiders. Although, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> another game that I could give two shits about. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking about the games we wanted to talk about. Not like we were most excited. Why do we talk about things that excite me? Nothing excites me. Let's talk about the Broncos versus the Raiders. The Broncos have the, well, the Broncos have an opportunity to have a winning season for the first time since the Kubiak era. I think that's pretty exciting. Matt, do uh, you think they pulled off versus the Raiders? Quit reading the comments. Please, God, beat the Raiders in the last game of the season. I mean, they, they've they lost seven in a row to these bastards. And look, we're going to have Max Crosby on the show either next week or the week after when the season's over. And the last thing I want to do is sit here and just have Max smiling at me the whole time like, oh, hey, Demi. Your, your Broncos can't couldn't beat us. And shit, he's never lost to them. So, you know, it's they've got to turn that tide as well. Uh, the Raiders are no slouch. Uh, they're going to be in the same, like, how do we build moving forward both that Denver's in? Um, you know, and then I, I just, I love Broncos Raiders. Broncos Raiders is what football is. It's what the NFL is. It's built on heated rivalries where guys do not like each other franchises do not like each other and what can you get out of that uh for the three hours that you play against your heated rivals so um yeah i mean i'm super excited about uh broncos raiders it's always fun uh, i wish that they would not play division games on the first week and the last week i mean i i prefer them well maybe the last week's okay but not the first week the first week is an extension of the preseason from what i keep hearing and that's just it's horseshit so you, you can't yeah. operate like that i don't know why the the nfl is is okay and content with the first week being an extension of the preseason i don't know why uh but it, it's I, frustrating i'll tell you that well i guess that was probably an understanding with removing the four preseason games although it's weird that it was the raiders and the raiders i still don't like the idea of bookending the entire season like that but you know if they pull it off and they end it on a high note it changes the narrative for the next couple of months here in broncos country which i am a proud member of you can talk uh you can catch me talking broncos over on let's talk broncos you can search for that in youtube or the links are down below uh a guy wants to know what are your Super Bowl picks. Also, I wanted to say thank you, Smuggles KB. He said y'all are funny. I'm funny, Matt's Matt. So I'll throw that out there. I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm a mushroom cloud lamb motherfucker, motherfucker. I'm super fly TNT. Um, Super Bowl picks. Right now, if I had to pick, I'm going Cleveland, Detroit. Yeah. That's not... It's such it's a, a real prediction. Thing to say. Can you believe that I just said that? And that's a possibility too. It's not the possibility. Yeah, fuck like, it a possibility. You're just you're just saying it to say it though. It's like, not true. I really think Cleveland and Detroit are yeah, that'd be the most incredible Super Bowl ever. Joe Flacco goes to a fucking Super Bowl with the Browns in the year of our Lord 2024. The I still don't like it. Every time you say Third it, word. I don't. I, and that's not the word turd that's getting me. It's the idea that the Browns and the Lions will face off in a basic last sort of hurrah for either fan base. Because if you lose that game, you're not coming back from it. We've talked about it a lot. Uh, use name says, Matt, you didn't see... The Super Bowl logo, the colors don't match your prediction. I don't even I don't even know what the Super Bowl logo right. looks like this year. I feel like I'm completely yeah, outside the realm. Um, I'm gonna look that up here in a second and then I'll get my conspiracy theories rolling. I just well, can't who, believe who the Rams I, are who do I want in the Super Bowl? The Jets. <laughs> Stop. The, the, now the, you're... I, honestly, I would love to see the, the Jets in the Super Bowl one day. That's what I want, but it, that shit ain't happening. So I mean, that's not what the question was. That's ridiculous. Real. So the, that's yeah. not. This isn't fantasy land island, Matt, where you're choosing like the little, the the craziest circumstances you could ever predict, and that There's the Jets would somehow be in the Super Bowl. Didn't, 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 didn't something happen with an island out there in the news? No, 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 no island talk. No. no. Island. All right, we're going to end the show. No, right? Ellen, for you. <laughs> Matt, for tell you, the people. You, you. 
for fuck's sake. Uh, the show is brought to you by Bet Online. I got to get that in there before he says anything else wild. Uh, as Matt already alluded to, we will talk on Monday uh, and we'll do some film breakdown because that's apparently what we're doing on Monday. And I can't wait to do it. Uh, Matt, that's tell the people hard. anything. No, no. Matt, just uh, where can they find your stuff? Find my stuff at 60 Academy on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. My stuff and things. Um, you can find Bree's stuff at Bree Mesa's 303. She does a great job. She keeps this bitch rolling. Without her, there is no show. Um, you know, and then look, 60 Academy's rolling. We're in here uh, all weekend. Uh, and then back to the regular grind Monday morning at 5 a.m. as Christmas break is over. Thank God. And we're back to it. Um yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to a good 2024. So everyone out there, be safe. Uh, have a great weekend. Don't drink and drive. Don't do anything too stupid. Um, you know, and, and try and enjoy yourselves. And if your team loses, don't punch your TV or, like, lose your goddamn mind. I've seen so many videos of people doing that. It's just, it's okay. Take your L. Move on with your life. It's all good. Monday, we're going to break down the, the championship game, too. I can't wait for that. I honestly cannot wait. Uh, you can go over and see why if you follow Matt over on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. It'll be an exciting matchup. Can't wait to watch that one either. And we'll see you on Monday to break it all down for you. Peace. Peace.